It's time for Health Check with Heidi Gottman, a daily dose of health and wellness information. Call or text Heidi your questions at 373-1220. That's 373-1220. And now here's Heidi Gottman. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Heidi Godman. Hope you're doing well on this very rainy day here on the gorgeous Sun Coast. We have a great program lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about something that affects probably every one of us at some point, and that is pain. Whether it's just a tension headache or whether you're dealing with joint pain or some sort of terrible injury that just the pain isn't going away from it, At some point, we are all dealing with pain, back pain, one of the most common reasons people go to the doctor, period, and that's worldwide. But what do you do about pain? Are you taking over-the-counter pain relievers? Are you willing to risk a heart attack from long-term use of an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication? Are you willing to risk other organ problems if you take acetaminophen, Tylenol? Are you willing to risk opioid addiction if you're taking a prescription painkiller? And of course, you know, opioid addiction is affecting so many people in our country right now. A thousand people are treated in emergency rooms every day for misusing opioids. Such a huge problem, of course, that in March, you remember, we told you about how the CDC issued its first ever guidelines for prescribing opioids for chronic pain. So what do you do? We have brought in an expert today to find out what our options are if we don't want to succumb and have to take some of these standard medications or remedies that everybody just automatically reaches for. My guest is Dr. Ken Red Cross. He's a board-certified internal medicine physician in New York and founder of Red Cross Concierge. Welcome to the program, Ken. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you for having me on. Hello, everyone out there. So, you know, this is something I, I, I write about this a lot. I talk about it here on the radio show, and it's it's something that seems to be getting worse every week. What is it about pain treatments that, that just seems to be digging us deeper and deeper into a hole? Well, you know, Heidi, I must say I am so impressed with how you started our discussion there because you're right. You touched on a lot of things that people reach for over-the-counter, it can definitely cause problems. You mentioned acetaminophen, which we talk about as Tylenol. You mentioned NSAIDs, which are non-steroidals. And you're right, each and every one of them can be detrimental to that of the body. Right now, America is definitely having challenges with how we deal with pain. But to me, I feel like that everyone is seeking relief in all of the wrong places. I like to stay very natural when I talk about this sort of thing, Heidi. Yeah, and and let's talk a little bit about the particular problems with with each of these in case folks out there aren't familiar with them. I mean, we've heard for a long time that it's okay to take an NSAID, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. That might be anything from aspirin to ibuprofen to naproxen. Um, But but now we have studies coming out saying that even taking them for a week could lead to problems. Yeah, they can. And so I'm glad you started with that one because aspirin is probably one of the older NSAIDs that we have and that we're very comfortable with. We always go, you have a headache, what do you do? You reach for an aspirin, especially years ago. But when you're taking the aspirin or any other of these NSAIDs that we're talking about called non-steroidals, you can have issues as far as with the stomach lining to later cause gastritis or ulcers. And it also can have issues with the kidney function because the kidneys are very delicate organs and they don't like NSAIDs for too long because you can get inflammation and damage, sometimes irreversible to the kidneys. So you have to be careful when you're dealing with NSAIDs. So they're not as simple as just popping them and forgetting about any consequences. And, and what about the new studies that have been coming out talking about heart attack? Yeah, and that's a little tougher because what's happening there with NSAIDs is not, let's say it's not directly the NSAIDs, it's the process of what the NSAIDs can cause, which is fluid retention. And when you have fluid retention and you're set up for maybe heart issues, what happens is that you get heart failure, fluid overload. So that has been evident really for some years now, but you're right, it's really starting to get a lot more press lately. And then also stomach bleeding. I mean, you're, you're talking about how this can lead to ulcers and things like that. But what about the risk of if, you, if you're already taking a blood thinner, maybe, and, and then you, you take an NSAID? This could be disastrous. It can, and it really increases your chances, not even linear, Heidi, but actually exponentially for some patients, especially in our older patients who are taking Coumadin or blood thinners for other issues and other events. And then you add on an NSAID or specifically aspirin to that, and you're right, you can totally increase your bleeding risk from there. 
So even though it seems that it's simple because he's over the counter and we can all go pick him up, you really have to think think twice about what you're putting into your body. Yeah, and it's not the kind of thing where we can say, but don't worry. If you just take an NSAID once in a while, you're okay. It really is an individualized situation. It depends on your health, your medical history. We can't say a, a general rule for everybody, right? No, you're right. One size does not definitely fit all when you're talking about medication. So it's important to, to make sure that you bring your doctor up to date with everything that you're taking as well. Some things that we may not know unless you share that with us. So then uh, for chronic pain, other people turn to Tylenol or acetaminophen. But acetaminophen yeah, yeah. is the one that we first started hearing about with long-term use and the real risks there. Tell us about those. So there's a couple of things. So the easier thing is that sometimes when you're taking Tylenol, acetaminophen for headaches, people become tolerant. But the bigger issue is this. Everyone should understand that when we take in medications, they're usually cleared one of two ways. They're either cleared by the liver or they're cleared by the kidney. Tylenol in particular is cleared by the liver. So therefore, when you are taking a level that's way too high, the liver doesn't do well metabolizing that. And when that happens, that can cause, once again, irreversible damage to the liver. So you have to be careful with the amount of Tylenol that you can take. I realize it's over-the-counter, but that doesn't mean that you can just pop them all day long because they also can cause problems as well. Yeah, and this this really worries me. We have a loved one who was taking Advil for a long, long time. Then her doctor said, oh, my goodness, you, you can't be just taking Advil for a long time. So then she switched her to Tylenol for a long time. And, and I'm saying, no, no, we've got to do something else. This is kind of scary. So then some people turn to opioids or prescription pain yeah. pills. And tell us about some of the brand names so people are familiar. So a lot of most people should know out there, Oxycontin, Vicodin, Percocet, these are the big ones, and this is what's really causing a problem here in the United States in particular. Heidi, you've already mentioned how many people are going to the emergency room each and every year, each and every day, I should say, for opioid-related illnesses. But also think about this. The president has spent $1.1 billion, that's with a B, on treatment of prescription drug and heroin abuse. That's how big an issue that is becoming here for us in the United States. And so it's becoming really something that we all need to really get the community come together and talk about ways to solve this problem. Why, why are opioids so addictive? Well, opioids are, are metabolized in the brain. I mean, they're, they're taken in, we go through our body, but they match onto receptors in our brain that are pleasing. They cause euphoria. They're called the mu receptors, mu receptors in our brain. And it does two things. Number one, it helps us with pain, but also it gives that euphoria so that you don't feel so much of the pain that you were feeling before. So while it has some properties that are good, especially if you're in severe pain, when we're talking about euphoria, we can understand how some of these things are abused by people who are having a hard time in their lives or people who are more predisposed to get addicted to certain things because they're using other substances. So you see that this is a big setup for others um, here in the, in the United States, and it's something that the medical community is just kind of catching up to, but we're a little bit behind the eight ball now. Yeah, but, but doctors like you are really getting in front of the eight ball, if you will, because you're starting to specialize in this. And you're an internal medicine physician. How was it that you came, first of all, to concierge medicine and then wanted to really focus on pain medication, too? Well, the big thing for me, and if you if you haven't figured out, Heidi, I love to talk. I'm an only child. And I couldn't <laughs> do that when I was in a group of uh, doctors having to see 30 patients a day, Heidi. I couldn't run my mouth and really give the patient what they deserve. So I said, you know, I need to figure out another model that I can live off on but also spend time with patients because that's what I love the most. And so I figured that the only way I could do this was to be able to deliver care in the way that I wanted to and also spend the amount of time that I wanted to do as well. And so back in 2007, I figured, what if I were to figure out a model to where I could get paid but still spend time with the patient that could be affordable and would add value to the patient? And so as I started that, I started to realize that a lot of patients were already frustrated with the system They were already paying out of pocket because they had these high deductibles, and they figured, gosh, if Dr. Red Cross could actually come to my home, and yes, Heidi, I do make house calls, and they're saying if he could come to my home and really spend an hour with me, what better way to do that than in this model? And so I've been very blessed enough to 
to be able to deliver care in a high quality way for patients, which once again, I think everyone out there deserves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and just to give everyone a little background on you, too, you got your MD from Columbia Presbyterian in Mm -hmm. New York. Um, But but what was it about about pain medication that you found so fascinating? Oh, well, you know what? It's because, just like you said at the top of the show, everyone at some point goes through pain. There's not really anything that really unites every single person in the United States except pain. No matter how good a shape we're in or whatever we're going through, we're all going to experience it. And then we all deal with it differently. Look, my practice is a little bit more on the, on the holistic or spiritual side of things. In other words, I think our brains really, really dictate how we all deal with pain. Some of us are a little bit, have a higher tolerance. Some of us have less of tolerance. Some of us have life circumstances that dictate how we interpret that pain. So I'm always fascinated, but the thing that fascinated me most, Heidi, was to be able to learn how can we manage it and do it safely or do it naturally. Because like you've mentioned, with tal- with the Tylenol, with the Motrin, those things, those things are all detrimental. But what were we doing before the pharmaceutical companies were here? We were doing and treating ourselves naturally during our cavemen and women days and everything. So I knew that there was a way for us to heal instead of all of the pills that, unfortunately, doctors have been, I don't want to say pushing, but we've been writing with our pads. And I think we all need to really think about how we were doing that. So it's always been something that's fascinated me. Okay. Well, we are so glad that you're able to join us today. And if you stick around then, everybody listening, you can hear Dr. Red Cross talk all about how to treat muscle pain and also how to treat joint pain. There aren't just uh, remedies that come in a pill. There are lots of other things you can do, but we need to take a quick break. So stick around more with Dr. Ken Rod- Red Cross in just a second. This is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ. We'll be right back. The sun is out, the kids are playing. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt or sick and needs urgent medical care. Sarasota Memorial Hospital's five urgent care centers are staffed with board-certified emergency and family medical physicians. So you can count on the best care fast. The right doctors right away at Sarasota Memorial Urgent Care Centers. Open daily 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. For locations, visit smh.com forward slash urgent care. Many people feel anxiety over going to the dentist. At Bayview Dental Associates, we are here to ease your fears and to cater to your needs in a relaxed, caring environment. For nearly 30 years, Bayview Dental has been providing affordable, personalized care. We offer general, cosmetic, and implant dentistry, professional cleanings, teeth whitening, and Invisalign. With six convenient locations, you can expect something to smile about when you visit Bayview Dental. Call us today at 941-203-3233. Are credit card bills piling up faster than you can pay? How would you like to have a large portion of your credit card debt, medical bills, and department store debt forgiven? National Credit Card Relief would like to give you free information on a proven debt forgiveness program. This program has been used by thousands to legally forgive millions in unsecured debt. It's not bankruptcy. It's not consolidation. This special program actually wipes clean the portion of your debt that is forgiven from what you owe your creditors. Call for free information and get all your questions answered in the first free call. The more you owe, the more you can save. If you have at least $10,000 or more in credit card bills, this debt forgiveness program can be very effective. Call for free information and find out more now. 800-546-2909. There is no cost or obligation for the information. Don't wait. Call 800-546-2909. That's 800-546-2909. Get your debt problem solved. Call 800-546-2909 today. How do you define clean? At Gotta Made, our mission is to provide you with the most amazing cleaning experience ever, or it's free. After an initial interview, a licensed, bonded, and insured technician will be trained to meet your definition of clean. The same person will arrive on time, every time. To arrange an interview, give us a call at 400-3711 or on the web at gottamadeclean.com. Gotta Made, the most amazing cleaning experience ever, or it's free. 
Law Offices of Kevin T. Wells proudly represents community associations in Sarasota and Manatee counties. Our firm is dedicated solely to the representation of condo and homeowner associations. Our attorneys have extensive experience and we strive to serve our clients' needs in an aggressive and cost-effective manner. To see how we can help you, call us at 941-366-9191 or view our website at thelawofficesofkevinwells.com. Don't have a radio? Then listen online at wsrqradio.com. I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and go click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. Welcome back to Health Check. I'm Heidi Godman. If you're just joining us today, my guest is Dr. Ken Red Cross. He's a board certified internal medicine physician, and we are talking about pain, which everybody seems to struggle with pain at some point. Maybe you have back pain, maybe you get headaches, I don't know, maybe you get knee pain, all kinds of pain. We're going to be talking about joint pain and what you can do about that in a little bit. But right now, we want to focus on muscular pain pain. Muscle pains are are something that a lot of folks are dealing with, and maybe they don't even know that it's their muscles actually bothering them. For example, tension headaches often are the cause of your muscles. Ken, tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, you're right, because, you know, it's really hard to discern sometimes what is causing our pain, but when you talk about headaches, everyone just thinks about the head in itself, but when you get these headaches and these tension headaches, you do get tensing of the musculature of the neck, musculature of the upper back, some of those things, and they actually also be giving you a headache as well. So look, as we talk about how we're going to deal with the pain, Heidi, I want everyone out there to think of three important things. Number one, I want to think about how can we do this naturally? Let's attack the pain ourselves. So let's do it naturally by, number one, focusing on our diet. The second thing, I want us to talk about relief remedies that are actually, like I like to say, closer to the earth. And the third thing, we should really talk about some healthy lifestyle changes as we kind of go through these things that we'll talk about today. So that way, everyone will be able to remember and realize how they can do this actually on their own. Okay, so diet, relief remedies, and lifestyle changes. But let's also talk about the kinds of pain that we're talking about. So it could be a tension headache. What other typical muscle pain are you hearing about from your patients? Well, the typical things that we see from muscle pain tend to be stress, which you touched upon with the tension headaches, but also overuse injuries. Sometimes we're just at work, and ergonomically we're not doing what we need to do, and we have these repetitive injuries that go. The other things can be if you're active and you literally are just walking and you strain your back, which is a very common cause of muscle pain, actually the number one cause of muscle pain for disability. So when you're dealing with muscular pain, it can just be simple things that we go through each and every day where you can kind of, in essence, tweak certain things depending on how you move, how's your posture. So it's really quite easy to have something like muscle pain really start to affect you. Yeah, especially too with the the advent of electronic devices. Now everyone in the world, we all have our heads and necks bent low. And I don't think a lot of people realize that having your chin to your chest for a while, looking at your iPad or your iPhone or your laptop, that that's an overuse issue because you're keeping your head in that same position and your neck muscles have to keep your head in that same position for a long, long time. That can cause neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, all of these different things. And it started with muscle overuse. So you mentioned diet fixes, relief remedies, and lifestyle changes. What do you mean by diet fixes? Well, whenever I'm talking about muscle pains, one of the first things I always love to talk about is turmeric. So turmeric is a spice that is in Indian cuisine. It's been around for thousands of years. But what's interesting is that we now know that it does have anti-inflammatory properties. So something that can be right in your cabinet can maybe be just as effective as an NSAID maybe, which we were talking about earlier, or something that can actually help you. You can get it in capsule form. You can actually put it on your diet, put it in your diet itself, whether it's with chicken or fish or what have you. But the point is you need to think of something as simple as turmeric, and so I'd love to bring that in. Some other things that we should think about, too, are sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, almonds, cashews. Who doesn't love all of these wonderful, yummy nuts? But it's interesting how they work. 
because they seem to be rich in magnesium. And magnesium, once it is taken into the body and ingested, tends to go into the muscles and, once again, provides relief and anti-inflammatory and some of those things. Those are things that we can all have in our cars, Heidi, that can really, really help us avoid some of the incest when we have pain from some of these overuse injuries that you described. Now, let me ask you, though, because we're talking about they have anti-inflammatory properties, do they also have any bleeding risks the way NSAIDs do? Not in the same way, and that is an awesome question there, Heidi, because when we're dealing with aspirin, everyone, if I could draw everyone a picture, I'm so sorry I can't kind of fax that over to everyone, but if I drew you a picture, if you can remember or just think of like a shard of glass, that would be what's called a platelet. Platelets help our blood to clot. So what happens with aspirin is aspirin helps to stop the ability for all of those shards of glass to come together to form that bottle again. So if aspirin is on that, that cannot happen. Therefore, guess what? The blood stays thin, and aspirin does what it's supposed to do for us at the time. The good thing with turmeric and the good thing with some of these other issues or things that we were talking with magnesium, turmeric is working just because the properties of itself as a root is literally to help just decrease inflammation by different mediators. It is not necessarily locking on those platelets and causing bleeding risk. So obviously with anything, even if it's an herb, even if it's a spice, you don't want to overuse those things, but you're not necessarily worrying about bleeding complications or something like that. But that is a wonderful question, Heidi. Also, we know that getting nutrients from food is much more potent than getting it from a pill. So are you saying that we should try to put turmeric on on food or try and eat pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, uh, black beans, cashews, these, these things high in magnesium. It's, it's better to ingest them in our diet rather than just pop a pill, right? Absolutely. That's always the first choice, no matter what. If you can possibly do that, it's great. It's a wonderfully tasting spice. You can mix the nuts with a whole bunch of things, pasta, salad. So there's a lot of ways to get it. So once again, you are absolutely right. You need to consider trying to get these, once again, closer to the real source of where the food is coming from instead of a pill if you can avoid that. Uh, I'm already, like, making recipes in my head here. So spinach with some black <laughs> beans and almonds and maybe throw in some pumpkin seeds. Okay, so so that is one way that we can try to reduce our pain with anti-inflammatory properties that are found in different foods and spices. But what about uh, traditional relief remedies? Well, one of the relief remedies I love is it's a homeopathic medicine. It's actually derived from what's called Arnica Montana, which is from the mountain daisy. Now, if that's not natural, I don't know what is, Heidi. We're talking about a mountain daisy here, so that gives me chills, actually. Um, but as we talk about it, I love it because it comes in two forms. It comes either a topically or you can take it in an oil form. Now, the topical thing that I love about it is that it does not have that medicine-y sort of smell. It doesn't have that greasy sort of feel that you get with some of the things that are over the counter. And Arnica Montana has been around, Heidi, for over 200 years. So I also love that as well. So it doesn't just help for the pain, but it also helps for stiffness and also bruising as well, which is why a lot of my colleagues who do perform surgery, my plastic surgery colleagues and that sort of thing, they love Arnica Montana. Because after they do their performances, whether it's a rhinoplasty or nose job or eye surgery, you get it bruising. And so they love Arnica Montana for that property as well. But when we're talking about pain, Arnica Montana is hands down the best remedy that I've been able to find that's actually been able to get relief to my patients. I love it locally with the gel or the cream. But when somebody has generalized pain, maybe a rough workout or a hard workout, I love to marry that with the pellets that you can put under your tongue to help dissolve, and that's what I love for generalized pain. So Arnica Montana is kind of, I want to call it the best-kept secret, but to be honest, Heidi, everyone knows about this stuff now, so it's not so much of a secret, but the reason why I love it is because it works, and that's what's most important in my practice. Where do you find it, and does it have any complications or risks? Luckily, we're talking about a homeopathic remedy. So when you're looking for Arnica Montana, it's sold as Arnicare, and you can get it just about anywhere now. You can get it in the grocery store. You can get it into the um, Whole Foods, any of those stores. But it's easy to find. 
not that expensive either, which is even better because some of those other medications that we mentioned were, were definitely um, a little more expensive. And because they're so easy to find and it's, and it's definitely beneficial, you'll find that a lot of people already know about this. And you may even realize that your friends and family next door already have it, but they didn't know it was a homeopathic remedy. Now, to your other question, the good point is that since it's homeopathic, it's going to use the body's own system in order to heal itself. So, therefore, you're not going to get drug-to-drug interactions. You're not going to get a side effect profile with anything that's a homeopathic sort of remedy. Because if there isn't a problem, then it's not going to be remedied with that particular situation. But with Arnica Montana, it's already kind of proof in the pudding. And when you try it, I think everyone out there will understand what I mean. But do not worry about drug-to-drug interactions with this because that is not the way homeopathy actually works. Okay. All right. Well, there's so much more to talk about, but we need to take a quick break. So, everybody, please stick around more with Dr. Ken Rudcross in just a minute. This is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ. We'll be right back. Don't lose touch just because you've left Sarasota. Stay connected with our online stream at wsrqradio.com. I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, it's real easy, man. Is he still in the Motel 6 here in Rome? Yeah, you know, goes out. God bless. At night, nobody's looking, helps the, helps people in there. I miss in the mornings. In the city? I wonder like, why. wonder why what? Oh, why he's got the... Uh... Why well, has got to the apartment away from the Vatican? This what are you just, saying? This is wrong. Why would you go down that road? Go down what road? Uh, you know what you're It's thinking. my job as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the mornings, weekdays 6 to 9, right here on WSRQ. I can't help but notice you're listening to the radio. Right on. The radio's pretty cool. Until you get out of the car. <laughs> Cars, man. They're like the world's heaviest radio. That's why I got this app, Next Radio. It lets me use the FM receiver that's built into my phone so I can listen to local radio wherever I take my phone, which is everywhere. Uninterrupted listening from car to sidewalk using less data and battery than streaming apps. Next Radio, live and local wherever you go. Check supported devices and download the free app today from Google Play. This is Lucia's recital, not her memorial. Her family cheers instead of mourns, with flowers they give instead of leave. Her family now has a solar lamp, not a kerosene one. A lamp that won't explode, nor add her life to the two million that kerosene lamps claim every year. No, Lucia's song will only end to start a new one, because Lucia's solar lamp is giving her a brighter future. Help us donate solar lamps. Visit wattsoflove.org. Welcome back to Health Check. I'm Heidi Godman. If you're joining us, my guest today is Dr. Ken Red Cross. We've been talking all about different pain relief strategies that you can employ. We were talking a bit about different things that you can do for your muscle aches and pains. So you can try to get some things in your diet if that's going to help you. And we didn't get to talk about some lifestyle changes. And Ken, tell us about things that you can do for lifestyle. Well, one of the bigger things I love for lifestyle changes when we talk about muscles, everyone, who doesn't like a nice warm bath or shower? Um, And when I think about that, one of the things you can do is actually add Epsom salts to the hot bath. And it's not so much just the warmth of the water, but Epsom salt, once again, what we talked about earlier, everyone, we talked about magnesium. And that helps magnesium to once again run into the muscles, which is very pleasing to the muscles and very soothing. So as far as the lifestyle change, if you do feel muscle aches and so forth, consider that nice warm bath. You definitely earned it. Um, And Epsom salt will help you feel a lot better. Okay, so Epsom salts or change your diet a little bit. Or we had also talked about that one particular natural thing that could could have an anti-inflammatory impact, and it's Arnica Montana. And how is it sold again? Yeah. Arnica Montana, just like the state of Montana, and I always remember it because it's also known as the Mountain Daisy. 
Um, and so that makes you always feel really good about, once again, staying closer to the earth. And it's easy to find. And that's another thing I love about it. Okay. So those are great ideas for muscle pain. But what about joint pain? Because this really is, is tough. If you no longer have cartilage, yeah. those little cushions in between your bones, yeah. in your knees, in your hips, in your ankles, even in your fingers, what can you do? Well, I'll tell you, so when you're dealing with joint pain, a whole bunch of causes, Heidi, right? We're talking osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, a whole bunch of things. But the interesting thing is when we're dealing with joint pain, it's not so much us adding foods that are going to help with the joint pain. With joint pain, it's about really avoiding foods to trigger problems and, once again, trigger inflammation. So you need to cut down on things such as refined carbohydrates, salty foods, sodas, even back up on the dairy and so forth. These things all cause inflammation, especially in our joints. So as we try to avoid some of those in our diet, that will actually give you relief of the joint pain. And that's something that we really don't think about. Once again, food actually causing joint pain. It's really fascinating when you really understand what inflammation does to our body and causing that of disease. Sure. Now, I have heard, of course, about sugars and refined carbs causing inflammation. And fried foods, we know, are are so terrible for you. Salty foods can raise your blood pressure and lead to different cardiovascular problems. But dairy products and inflammation, I haven't heard about this. Tell me about that. Well, the reason why is because dairy dairy isn't really all made alike, in other words. I mean, there's pure sources of dairy that people can get, and then there's some that are also not necessarily refined. I know there was this big movement to get unpasteurized dairy, which I know people felt that that was a little more natural. There's some challenges with that and potential for bacteria and so forth. But one thing we're learning is that a lot of people are really lactose, not necessarily just intolerance, but they have milk allergies. And so when you have these milk allergies, once again, your body doesn't like allergies. And what happens to everyone? We get these cells built up, and you get inflammation. And with inflammation comes disease. So we should really think about So anything that's causing inflammation, we need to kind of back up on. And like you mentioned before, fried foods are a common offender, especially here in the United States. Would it be possible that you have a problem with dairy and you don't even know it? Maybe you're not lactose intolerant or anything, and, and you don't even realize that dairy could be causing inflammation. Yeah. You're right. It's becoming a lot more common that way because when you have lactose intolerance, that's kind of easy to know there's a problem. You get diarrhea and bloating and that sort of thing. So that's easy. But when you're taking milk and then a few hours later you get this weird rash or a little bit of itching around your mouth or that sort of thing, it's kind of hard to to attribute it to that of the milk itself. But now people are kind of waking up to that. Going to see their doctor and allergy testing is really revealing that milk allergies are probably a little more common than thought. So it's something to think about. All right. So something for joint pain that you can do is try to reduce the inflammation, which really makes a lot of sense, but but try to reduce the inflammation through your diet. And then there are other types of relief remedies, and we're not talking about yeah. opioids and or acetaminophen or ibuprofen. No. Yeah, this is a this is a no opioid zone. This is a opioid free zone, I should really say. When you're talking about relief remedies for joint pain, there's two wonderful things. Number one, you've already touched upon it. We've talked about glucosamine. So as we get a little older, glucosamine, which everyone is very important for the cartilage for us to do kind of take some shock absorption as we jump up and down on our knees or we walk all day. So over the time, as we become a little more mature, I hate to say age height, I always say as we mature. As we mature, we start to realize that the glucosamine actually goes down. So it's important to maybe supplement that once again. Your glucosamine, in a, usually in a gel capsule type of form, which is very beneficial. But one of the newer things that's out there as far as in the data is the importance of vitamin D. We now know that people who are a little bit lower in vitamin D, Heidi, well, they may have more joint pain. And if that's the case, there's this wonderful organization called the Organic and Natural Health Association. They focus on their website, thepowerofd.org, with allowing us as consumers, as patients, to actually go to their website and order our own vitamin D kits to check our own vitamin D. If you can't get into your doctor, your doctor's too busy, you could do this on your own. And because of this, what's happening is that a lot of people are able to go to thepowerofd.org, get this, and take this result to their doctor and say, hey, look, I check my levels, my levels are low, can this be contributing to my joint pain? And then you could have a wonderful discussion with your doctor from there and figure out if, once again, we can use a natural way to help you with the joint pain. So I'm really excited about this kind of new development. All right. I have to tell you, though, that sounds a little fishy to me to do a, a vitamin D test at home. How do you do that? 
Um, well, actually, it's interesting. It's a little kid. Um, if you, oh God, I wish I could show everyone. It's a little kid with a little plastic billfold, almost like a little wallet. And then what happens is that you get, and when you open up that kit, you're able to go there and just get a quick sample, and then you end sending that sample back to the website through the powerofd.org. And when you do that, they end up analyzing it, and they actually enter you in a study which is really focusing on tracking everyone's vitamin D along the way because we're finding vitamin D is not only influential when we're talking about joint pain, it's also important for how we even look at infertility because we're finding out that low vitamin D may actually affect infertility. It's also something that may affect your ability to get the flu or to have a little bit of a decreased immune system. So vitamin D is becoming so important that you have these organizations now that are really trying to emphasize the important thing. Get it out. Drive it out to us, the patients and the consumers. And there are a lot of MDs that are backing this this test. So that's that's very interesting. I, I guess I'd have to see it. And it is something that I have to see. But you can check it out, everybody. Power of D dot org is something that you might want to check yeah. into or, or at least ask your doctor you know what about d is that yeah. contributing right um and then glu- glucosamine and chondroitin I, I thought the studies on those were kind of mixed what have you actually seen among your patients who take it well you're right and that's a challenge too because you hit the nail right on the head Heidi because it depends on how many studies you look at you look at some studies that say they work some studies say they may be beneficial may not you added chondroitin for those who are out there. Glucosamine and chondroitin sometimes work quite well together for the same thing, for cartilage. And when you do have studies that go back and forth, it's kind of tough, Heidi, right? because what happens is that you don't really have a randomly controlled trial, especially from the pharmaceutical company where there's really no money in it for them. And I don't mean it in a bad way. Pharma is not all bad. But what I mean is that it's really hard to get these really controlled studies to when you can find out. The way I feel comfortable with it is clinically. You listen to what the patient tells you. The patients will tell you if they're taking glucosamine, I feel better. And that's the main thing I really look at is clinically is the way to go with it, especially if I know and feel comfortable that we're not doing harm. But you'll have people that just swear by it and do really, really well with it. So it's a lot better to try that than try and Vicodin or, or Oxycontin or something like that that can be potentially addicting. I agree. And if it doesn't work with you or for you, come in and talk to your physician and have a discussion. Hey, I heard of this Dr. Red Cross guy. He told me to try glucosamine. It worked a little, but I'm still having a little bit of discomfort. What do you think? And let's have another discussion around it. But I tend to have good results with it with most patients. And once again, it's a lot easier to try that than some of these other addicting medications. I agree that and uh, with that, and I really like that approach. Of course, one of the, the main things that everybody talks about when it comes to relieving joint pain is lifestyle change. So weight loss and exercise. And, and with weight loss, it really is pretty stunning as far as how much just a few extra pounds can put on your joints. Yeah, you talk about stunning. Let me tell you this. One pound of weight loss can actually equate to about four pounds on the joint. That's that's only one pound we're talking about. So like you just mentioned, you mentioned a few pounds. So with three pounds, you're talking 12 pounds off of your joint there. So that's a big thing. And we're talking also, when you're dealing with exercise, we're talking low-impact exercise. It doesn't have to be the pounding and the pounding because obviously there's some joint discomfort. But we're talking about low-impact exercise can really help with that weight loss next as well. So it's important. I also read another great study, Heidi, that talked about the importance of considering Tai Chi, which is also very, very effective for joint pains as well, which is also a lifestyle change. So I love all of those things that are spiritually based and at all natural based. So consider Tai Chi, everyone out there as well. And everybody might be saying, uh, you know, exercise, that is the last thing I feel like doing. My knees are killing me. But actually, if you're exercising, you're building up the muscles. And then how does that help? Because when you're building up the muscles, everyone, you're stabilizing the joint. You know, knee pain is the number one reason for joint pain when people come into my office. And so if you can imagine when you're walking, once again, low impact, when you're walking, when I say walking, I want you to walk with a little bit of purpose. Exercise, don't forget, is when you're walking and you're exercising and you're actually unable to speak in full sentences. That's what I call exercise. And when you're doing that, you're strengthening your quadriceps and your hamstrings, and that's helping to stabilize the joint. In this case, I'm just mentioning the knee joint, but um, that's any joint in particular. So it's definitely important to do exercise, and don't forget, low-impact exercise is fine.
No impact. All right. Terrific. Dr. Ken Redcross, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. You're an MD who takes a holistic approach. You're looking at the whole picture. And I think that makes such a big difference for everybody. You're looking at the causes and also looking at some some things that are uh, not just in a drugstore to help us cope with pain. So thank you so much. And do you, do you have a website we can check out for more information? I do, Heidi. Um, my website is drredcross.com, just like the American Red Cross. And it's also my Twitter handle is at Dr. Red Cross. By all means, everyone, feel free to reach out. I love meeting new people. I love answering questions. And Heidi, thank you so much for having me on today. I've had a wonderful time. Me too. A lot of fun talking to you. Thanks again, Ken. All right, everybody, if you'd like more information, it's drredcross.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at, at Dr. Red Cross. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, I have some great tips for you. You don't want to miss them. This is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ. Stay with us. <laughs> 